there's a lot of names that have come down through the um, that have spread out because obviously a large uh, normal name like uh, Costello, which again is if you study the name Costello, it's a it's um, a combination of Old Irish and Norman, um, but uh, the the Costello is a Norman name. Uh, as perceived in in Ireland, and the Burks, all Burks and Butlers, and they're very common Irish names. Butlers and and, and Burks are very very common Irish names, um, but you'd have to be suspicious of a lot of them because uh, people would have used that name in many ways, like uh, Southern blacks would have used the word Lincoln, or or a Washington, and so on. You know. Or Jefferson and so on. So you you may it may be that they didn't have they didn't know themselves like that. So they would call them by the their what you call it name their their landlord's name. Um, <clears throat> but there's a, a tremendous amount of Norman names in Ireland. But when you say Norman, at least for me anyway, ruling class sort of aristocratic Norman versus the ones that came in on boats and came in to build steeples or wherever, they'd be just Europeans, as far as I'm concerned, just just happened to come in for the job, just like the Poles that are in right now. You know, they're there because that's there's, there's work there, you know. They're not in as a conquering people or anything. Um, but I think, I think we probably covered... Oh, by the way, they didn't really bring in any... Um, um, culture in the sense that they didn't bring in a language and they didn't bring in a, a, a set of, you know, there's no Norman music as such, uh, although I'm sure they had their own songs and they had various things, but they became totally uh, subsumed in the Irish culture. Huh? Yeah, that's crazy. It is, yeah. But it, it tells you how um, virulent the Irish culture must have been at the time. There was no question of, of it uh, of it being pushed aside and being subordinated by this. While economically and industrially they were totally outclassed, the Irish in, in those terms, in culturally they, they didn't. Um, so I suppose that's a, that's a nice bright little thing in our history that at least uh, we had. But the thing that fascinates me the most though is the, um, uh, the, the fact that these Economic system survived. The, they still retained their agricultural methods. They just centralized it. They didn't really change it. They didn't come in and just redraw the maps. And again, the, the, best, um, the best place to see that is in the west of Ireland, where they use stone walls. When you're, when you're driving across Ireland, you know, you'll see places and there's just it's very anglicized in that there are hedgerows or there are earthen mounds well they could be built any time because well they're relatively easy to build so those kind of divisions could have taken place uh, almost any time but the old stone walls could not have they could not have taken place at any quick no conqueror came in and did that kind of engineering works. So that's the one proof that we have, uh, which is not recognized widely enough, that that is extremely old, by the sheer volume of it. If you were to do a calculation of how many tons of stones there were in a parish, you'd, you'd, you'd go crazy. You, you, you couldn't imagine. How could that be? So therefore, it couldn't possibly have done, been done by some arbitrary law or act by some new lord that says, well, we're going to do this. It just wouldn't be possible. The, the machinery wasn't there for it. The manpower wasn't there for it. Nothing was there for it. So therefore, that is absolute positive proof that that economic system survived throughout all of these phases and went way, way back. So they, they made no impression at all on the um, the way of life, say in East Galway, um, and one can then assume that probably the same occurred in the other areas that they they conquered. They they left them pretty well the way they were, except that. How about in uh, the language? Uh, 
In the Irish language, uh, aren't there remnants of uh, French as in English? We have all these remnants of from the Norman Conquest in England? Probably more in English, in the English language than in the Irish language. You don't really find, I mean, you find some stuff that maybe goes back to Latin. Yes. But you don't really find and stuff that's pre Latin as it's in the old Indo European, but you don't really see a lot that's, of that's very you don't see things, You don't find a lot of Irish that you're going to recognize. No. You don't. And if you did, it would probably be a more recent... Yeah, you get recent English stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you don't get, yeah. You don't get, like, older stuff. Don't yeah. you see some of the notable uh, terms that relate really back to some kind of Scandinavian language and the Irish language? And the nautical ones. I think a lot of those are Irish, actually. Mm -hmm. Astronomical and nautical stuff, I think, tend to be Irish. Yeah. Well, see, that's one of the things that has to be rolling back as part of the English conquest, they denied the existence of an Irish language, but the proof is there. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching that new Elizabeth, you know, the yeah. Helen Mirren stars, yeah. and then she says to the young girl of Essex, Irish? Who knows Irish? Do you know Irish? Yeah. <laughs> that's Elizabeth one or Elizabeth two? Um, one. One. Yeah. yeah. No, that's two. That's the Elizabeth. The, the, you mean Queen Elizabeth, Henry, uh, and the Anne Boleyns, and Henry VIII. Yeah, that's the first. That's the there's Elizabeth one okay. out. That's the one here. Yeah, this is the first one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, the, wait the a minute. The one that gave Ireland all the trouble. Yeah. Right. Present Queen is the Elizabeth Tudor. second, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, but they just call it Elizabeth. Yeah. yeah. No, this one is about. Yeah. The Elizabeth the Tudor. Elizabeth Tudor. Yeah. Troublemaker for Ireland. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she really destroyed Ireland. She, yeah. That was the um, worst thing. But we. And so is that? So basically, then, I mean, look, the English invasion started with the Tudors. Then, is pretty that well, correct? yes. Yeah, yeah. pretty well. And, yeah. and they sent Protestants over uh, to settle, right? And then. Yeah. And then I wanted to ask you, you know, this this whole Irish Parliament thing. Like, when an Irish Parliament began in 1171, are we talking about? Normans in Irish Parliament? Yes, yes. And then later on we're talking about Protestants in Irish Parliament, right? Uh, until Charles Parnell, until the Home Rule Party. Um, I'm not sure. When you say later on, um, you're talking about the what we talked about the last time, the yeah. the Parliament that existed uh, in 1800 when they, yeah, the Act of yeah. Union. That was the Protestant Irish Parliament, is that correct, mostly? Well, it was it was um, the surviving institution that traced itself back to uh, 1171. Okay, all right. Um, See, it was the same yeah, institution okay. yeah, all right. which required to be called by the king. Remember, yeah, for a right. very long period, parliaments had to be called by the king. Right. That was one of the great changes when they literally called it themselves. And called the king in to open it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so did you? Did were Catholics ever justly <coughs> represented in the Irish Parliament before the twentieth century? Irish Catholics. Um. Not really. Not really. Not even with the Home Rule Party, right? Um, well, because the landlord system. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on paper. <laughs> The, um, but because of the, uh, the only ones that could vote was the, those who had a tenancy and if you didn't vote the right way you lost your tenancy. So the landlords literally herded them down to the vote today. And one of the indications or the pride of the landlord was how many he could drive down the road to, on voting day. So it was done very flamboyantly.